Hey, how's it going? Mr. Bill here, and today I wanted to show you a trick about uh, reverse convolution reverb impulse responses. Uh, basically, this trick was shown to me uh, last week or the week before by Incanti from the Zebler Incanti experience, who I'll link in the description. And I think Woolg showed him, so I'll link him in the description too. So uh, props to both of those guys for, for figuring this out, and props to, in, uh, props to Woolg, I guess, for figuring it out. And props to Encanti for showing me the trick. <coughs> um, so I'll show you the trick now. It's fucking really cool. So let's say like uh, this is a section of a tune that I'm working on. It sounds like this. So it's basically just like a bunch of these weird loop things that I'm moving around and then I put some harmony under it. And like so yeah, basically it's just like, I'm just looping like lots of little pieces of this sound that I made and then I'm just kind of like looping different lengths and starting the start positions from different places to kind of you know, create this sound. So anyway, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that um, that sound and may, uh, maybe some drums or something to show you this actual trick. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do, um, and this also ties into the layering thing that I showed last week um, or however long ago my last tutorial was. But yeah, like this is another thing that you can use as a layer to kind of like fill your music out a little bit. Uh, so let's <clears throat> the first thing we need to do is we need to create a reverb tail. So let's say that I use Valhalla Room and I just put this on on this sound here and then I just use uh, let's just say I use a tiny little cut from the end so uh, let's say this this is our sound this is tiny little boom boom uh, so I'll just choose a preset just for the sake of easiness um, cathedrals let's go abbey church or something <coughs> sounds alright um, yeah maybe I'll have a little bit more dry so you get the actual like pre-delay happening. Mm, the high cut we could take off. So it's a bit brighter. Okay, cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna render that into a new channel. So let's just hit resampling on a new channel and just record it. Uh, so this is probably long enough, honestly. Um, so let's just delete this, get rid of the reverb. And now we're just gonna kind of make like just doctor this a little bit you know um let's turn it up so we can see it maybe let's just create our own sort of tail here okay that's cool so i'm going to consolidate make it its own clip actually i'm going to reverse it and then consolidate it okay so now what we have is a reverse piece of reverb That's what we have. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Max for Live and we're going to pull the Convolution Reverb. Uh, you can use Pro or the regular. I guess it doesn't matter so much. <clears throat> I'm just going to use the regular one. And then we're going to pull this reverse piece of reverb as the impulse response into the Convolution Reverb. We can now delete this channel. And now we can send things to this Convolution Reverb. And instead of giving us a forward reverb, it's always going to give us a backwards reverb. And it's going to do it in a weird way. It's not actually just going to play the reverb backwards. It's going to like use that as the impulse for the space. You know how impulse response works. Like basically, an impulse response is like if you go into like a, a room. Like let's say I go into this room right here, <coughs> um, and then I play. Like I, get, I literally get a speaker, and I play um, a sine wave that goes from twenty hertz to twenty kilohertz. So it's just like a whoop, like a big sweep up. Uh, and then I put a microphone in the room with it and I record the space and then I put both of those sounds back into a piece of software and then I phase cancel them so then you're just left with the sound of the space you're not actually left with the impulse uh, itself and then that is your impulse response and then you put that impulse response into the impulse response reverb say convolution reverb <coughs> and that's how you normally get a um, <coughs> an impulse response so it just says drop IRs here so what we've done here is we've created our own impulse response by creating like a reverb tail and then just reversing it. So it's kind of like an experimental impulse. But it sounds really cool and I'm glad that these guys showed me this trick. So let's just send this synth to that, uh, to that channel now and see how it sounds. So 
we're getting this sort of thing. So you know it's kind of like adding this kind of weird side chainy layer. And then you can also mess with like the decay and the size and all of that sort of stuff. So it's kind of cool you get this like, you know, crazy, crazy shit happening on the end of it. <clears throat> so let's say we try it again. This time we'll just use the Ableton reverb though. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to record a really short impulse. So let's say we want it all the way wet. Mm, that should be fine. That's fine. Like, let's just record like a really standard short impulse. And then record that down. <clears throat> Sounds cool. Probably turn this up a little bit just so it's got a little bit of balls and then reverse it. So now what we have is this. So let's cut this back a little bit and just kind of doctor it again. That's a little too loud. All right. <clears throat> that should be fine. Let's make sure it doesn't have a click or anything on the end. All right. Now let's try this as our impulse. So, well, actually, let's. Let's keep the old one as well, because that was kind of fun. So let's drop a, let's drop this convolution reverb in this time. Uh, and then <coughs> again, let's drop our own impulse in that we just created. Jesus Christ. Our, this is our own impulse again that we just created from reversing a reverb. So we should be able to just drop that straight into there. Um, hmm, what's going on? Max is being a little bit fucky again. <coughs> hmm. Why is that not working? I have no idea. What if I consolidate this clip again? Hmm. Okay. Apparently that's not working. So what? What if I render this out? Let's just yeah, sure. Let's put it there. What if I try and drop it in from Windows Explorer? There we go. So I don't know. Sometimes Max just bees a little bit weird. So let's try try this one now. So as you change the size, it seems like it's changing pitch as well, which is kind of cool. So you can kind of tailor it to the pitch of your track, I guess, using this size control. And then the length, obviously, with the decay. And then the gain is obviously the volume. <coughs> So we're going to take this reverb off. So you can kind of hear that, that like side chain thing. It's really fun. So what happens if we try this on drums then? So let's say we got this drum beat. So let's send that to this reverb. So it's cool, like, you know, you can kind of create a bunch of crazy shit. So what, what happens, uh, so let's just try one more thing. I mean, basically you get the gist of the trick now, hopefully, but like, um, I just want to try one more thing before ending this tutorial. And that's it. that is, I want to create uh, a reverb that doesn't have a pitch to it. So let's do it with like a drum. Let's just say like a kick, that's fine. Uh, so again, let's just try kind of a shorter, uh, shorter one. Maybe like a really short kick reverb like that. Let's try that. Okay, so let's reverse that again, put fades on it, turn it up. Okay, so we have like basically a reverse kick. So let's put the uh, convolution reverb back down here. 
There we go, that time it worked for some reason. Okay, let's turn this clip back on and we're going to use this now as the impulse. Right, I'm going to get rid of this reverb of course. Okay, so we need this to be dry, ah oh, sorry, wet. So that's kind of cool. So what happens if we turn the size and stuff and just mess with the settings a bit? That sounds really cool. So that's like, it kind of has this like weird pumping effect again, but then it has a, like this strange backwards drum quality. Cool, so what does that sound like as a layer with the drums? Maybe with less decay. So yeah, anyway, um, take it or leave it, that's the trick, and I think it's a cool trick, and it's definitely something that's fun to play around with, regardless of whether or not you use it in tracks. And I think it, it can be used as a good layer for a lot of things to, to just like pack uh, pack up your, your sounds and kind of like just there with the drums, you know, it makes it, the drums have like this whole new element of depth to them and stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, check out mrbillstunes.com and check out the description of this video to have a look at Encanti's music and Wolg's music. They're both really good. And yeah, have a nice day.